Welcome back. It's your man, Herman. And one common question that I get from a lot of friends and family is that because I travel so much, is how do I afford to travel as much as I do? And the truth is, it's actually just a combination of, of things such as uh, credit card points for, for miles and hotels. Uh, also, just trying to find deals uh, with, um, you know, with hotels, with airlines, with car rentals with uh you know with all these um all, all these companies and also just simply uh a combination of uh, of them all and here i'm going to go over four things in particular that i take into account when i book flights uh, in order to save myself money and also just potential uh, mishaps on the trip like let's say flight cancellations things like that so let's get started well, uh, the first uh, topic that I'll go over is actually just using different airports. Uh, it's one that I've taken advantage of before, but a lot of other people may not think, think of this. So in my case with uh, with Tampa Bay, there are multiple airports. I mean, you do have the um, the Tampa Airport, the main one, and then you also have a smaller one that's uh, the St. Pete Clearwater Airport. Uh, there's also the Sarasota Airport if somehow, you know, it, it lines up. But the, the bigger one that, you know, maybe a lot of people that I haven't used before was actually the Orlando airport. And that one has a lot more flights and it's about an hour and a half, two hours away. So for that, of course, you, you know, you have your economy parking that you can go to and leave, leave your car there. Yes, you'll have to pay for that. But I mean, you might be paying less than a hundred dollars, but you'll be saving hundreds of dollars more in, uh, in the flights that, that you could take. So, and I'll, I'll show you the, the following example. Here on, on Google Flights, uh, I was actually just looking up flights from uh, from Tampa to, to London. But instead of just choosing the Tampa Airport, which, which is um, as a code of, uh, of TPA, uh, I also brought in a little bit so that it also includes uh, flights out of the Orlando Airport, which is code MCO. And by doing so, I mean, it is so obvious that doing this, this method can save you hundreds of dollars just, just on that alone. Because uh, the, the prices you can see, for, for example, same, same dates, uh, you know, same destination that you're going to get to eventually. It, it's if I go from, from Tampa Airport uh, to London, yes, there are direct flights. Uh, but if I were to choose the, the same destination and go out of the uh, Orlando Airport, you'll see more options, such as, uh, in, in this case here, uh, yes, there is a layover, but the flight is going to be uh, starting uh, at five hundred dollars. So with pre with main cabin, it's probably going to cost you around six hundred dollars. Uh, same with here, uh, this this flight is probably going to cost you uh, around uh, a little bit over five hundred dollars for for that uh, main cabin uh, seat. And unless you want to pay the basic economy fare, that's you know that's up to you. But with that, I mean, as you can see, the difference in prices is pretty substantial. And just that alone uh, could save you, uh, you know, could save you hundreds that you could put to, uh, to better use, better hotel, um, literally anything else that, that you can think of uh, instead of just paying extra for, uh, for the flight. This one actually leads me right into my second topic. And as you saw, I was using a Google Maps to, to look up this flight. And that's actually what I would recommend if you want to save money is to actually book through uh, or, or find your flights through through Google Flights. And, uh, and, and also there's another website. It's called uh, Going. It used to be called uh, Scott's Cheap, uh, Cheap Flights. But uh, the, the reason why I say uh, Google Flights and not Expedia or Travelocity or any of these third-party uh, travel websites is because when you, when you book through a... Uh, when you book through these websites, you actually book through their portal and you buy directly with them first and then and, and then with the airline. Whereas if you go with Google, uh, then it, the Google Flights is actually going to direct you to the, the website of the airline itself and you're booking directly with the, with the airline. And this is actually really important because what ends up happening is, let's say if you are on a flight and, or you're, you have a flight scheduled and, you're, and, and it gets canceled, then a lot of airlines, especially, you know, your ultra low cost, like your Spirit, Frontier, things like that, they're going to do everything possible to not book you a different flight or not change you to a different, um, to a different itinerary or anything like that. And one excuse that they're always going to use is that, oh, you booked the flight through a third party portal. We can't help you. You have to book through, uh, you know, through the third party portal and they have to help you. 
that's not exactly true. They still have to do their thing. However, that's one hurdle that you're going to have to get over if uh, if you book through a, through a third-party portal. But if you book through directly with the airline, they cannot make that excuse because you booked with them. So that's one thing to take into account when, you, when you're actually doing uh, the booking process. So uh, topic number three is going to be probably the most popular one or that is becoming more popular than, than it was in the past, which is the usage of airline points through through credit cards. This, I think, has saved me the most amount of money from any other method that, I, that I've used to, to travel just because you can convert those points that you, you know, that you acquire through your normal, regular, everyday spend. You can convert those over to, uh, to airline miles and to redeem for, for flights. And the only thing you might have to pay is just uh, taxes and fees. I usually just taxes a lot of times. And then right there, you got yourself maybe a thousand dollar flight is going to cost you about $50. That's definitely by far the, the cheapest uh, hack that you can use to, uh, to do this. So I'll, I'll, I'll go over a few examples. So uh, for the first example that I'm going to give is actually going to be through welcome bonus offers by opening up uh, new credit cards. These welcome bonus offers are probably the quickest way to gain a lot of points really quickly. Uh, using the Chase Sapphire Preferred, if, if you were to open it, you, the, you can get 60,000 welcome bonus points after spending $4,000 in the first three months after you open the, the account. Uh, you can use these points either at maybe one simple point uh, value if you use to through the travel portal. Uh, in the Chase Sapphire Preferred, it does give you a point boost. So those 60,000 points can actually become about seven, 75,000 points if you just redeem them uh, through, the, through the travel portal. Uh, but you can also use these uh, these points because uh, in this case the Chase Sapphire Preferred is has flexible points currency that you can actually transfer to airline transfer partners of Chase. Uh, the the top ones I personally I think are United and uh, Air Canada. I, I've used them uh, several times. I was able to get phenomenal value for uh, for these points. The uh, the other the, the other cool thing about um, uh, having these uh, these travel cards is that they also give you some uh, travel protections that other cards may not may not give you. So flight cancellations and things like that, you can actually uh, you know put additional spend. Like maybe like oh because your flight got canceled, you can uh, you know they actually do cover certain things like um, you know additional meals or maybe you have to buy something like like a, an, another item of clothing like a, like a shirt just because you're you're uh, you're staying a lot longer than the expected. So, so definitely look at cards like this. Um, also, you know, American Express is, is a very good um, bank uh, for, uh, for travel cards. It's similar for the same reason as, as Chase. I mean, definitely Amex and Chase are the ones that are neck to neck is, uh, or neck and neck. And topic number four is actually just going to be a continuation of, of credit cards. And this is specifically with airline specific credit cards. That, that you can get. A, a lot of these issuers like Chase and Amex have them, and I'm going to give an example of that, of that one next. But the reason why I, I, I single that one specifically is because if, if let's say you have your own business and you're traveling a lot, traveling a lot for work, you have a family that lives, uh, let's say in Florida, I mean, a lot of people have family in the, in the Northeast, and you're always traveling, always taking the same airline, or, uh, or, or same thing, you just, you like me, just like to travel a lot, and you have a preferred airline, you definitely should get a, the airline-specific credit card that you're always traveling with because a lot of these credit cards will have extra additional perks that will save you money, money in the long run, uh, especially free check bags, uh, priority boarding, uh, sometimes club lounge access, and, oh, and probably the sweetest ones is going to be if they give you a boost in airline status. Obviously, I'm going to use uh, Chase again as an example. I think Chase is a, is a really good uh, issuer when it comes to travel credit cards. It's, it's my personal favorite. And no, this is not sponsored by Chase in any way. It, so I'm going to use this example with the uh, United Explorer card. This, I think, is actually one of the, the cheaper options for an annual fee card that has, you know, only 95. It's a $95 annual fee per year. Uh, see, uh, it's, it's actually free uh, the, the first year after, after you open it. But um, it, you know, apart from uh, apart from the the welcome bonus that you get, which is a solid welcome bonus, three thousand sixty thousand points after three thousand points in the first three months, uh, after uh, yeah, after the account is open, 
Uh, it has a few additional perks, such as, um, you know, it has a free check back, which, yes, it can actually save you that much, especially if you're going with people, uh, because it's not, it doesn't just cover a free check back for you, for yourself, but actually comes up, covers up to a few uh, few individuals if as long as they're on your itinerary and, and, they're, uh, and they're traveling with you. Uh, you also get uh, free uh, TSA pre-check, but this is huge. If you do not have TSA pre-check and you're always traveling, you need this in your life. It's going to save you hours at the airport getting stuck, uh, having to take off your belt, your shoes, all these other things. Uh, so this is this is a, um, uh, a lifesaver uh, to me personally, I think. Uh, some, some of the other sort of things, if, if you always like to buy food on, on, on the airplane, uh, you know, during the flights, uh, not everybody does this, but if you do, I mean, you do get, uh, you do get a discount of 25%. Uh, and like I said, uh, priority boarding. Uh, in this one in particular, like when I was mentioning about uh, airport lounge status or airport lounge access, this one actually gives you uh, two United Club passes every year. Uh, that you can use uh, for uh, for when you're taking uh, uh, United flights. Uh, I have used this before with uh, with my mom. The United Club Lounge, I think, is is really it was really good. You know, you get free food. You can just stay there. You avoid the chaos of the airport in a more quiet environment with better Wi-Fi. It, whenever you stick with just maybe one airline program or or one hotel, you know, it's just similar to a hotel program, you are going to get rewarded because not only will let's say if you have the the travel cards. Uh, you're gonna earn uh, miles for that airline when you, you know, when you actually purchase uh, airline tickets with that credit card, as well as the uh, the miles that you get just from from flying. So you get to kind of uh, double dip. Uh, also, if you if you accrue status, you know, from flying enough, uh, you you are gonna get things like you know free uh, free free upgrades for uh, to first class, which I've gotten, which are amazing. I I love getting. Uh, you know, I love having airline status for that reason because most people won't have them. So, it's, and if you're traveling, some you know during certain points of the week where, let's say, you know your your consultants that travel on a weekly basis are not in those flights, you're gonna get that uh, that first class uh, seat upgrade, or, uh, or 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 you can have the option to select your seats uh, for free, uh, or sometimes pay for your upgrades at a discounted rate, which like 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 I did when I went with. With my mom to to Canada last uh, uh, this past July, and I was able to upgrade us to to their first class cabins. It was a trans it was a transcontinental flight, but their cabins were, were amazing. Huh? If you have any questions or uh, or any suggestions, you know, please leave a comment down below. But otherwise, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, bye.